Hi, this is Dr. Rosenberger from Appalachian Spring Dermatology and today we're talking about photodynamic therapy. Now photodynamic therapy is not new at all, but we have made some recent improvements in how we do it here in the office and so I wanted to review those things with you as well as just give a basic overview to those of you who may be new to photodynamic therapy. So with photodynamic therapy, it is a treatment that we use primarily to treat precancer spots. It's also used for acne and rosacea, and it has a side benefit that has a great cosmetic outcome. So we use it for all those reasons here in the office, and we've been doing so since 2005. So this is a time-tested treatment. Um, because it has been around for so long, there's still a lot of scientists who are continually working on trying to find ways to make the treatment more effective, meaning it kills more precancer spots particularly, and less painful. So those are the things that are continually in evolution with this treatment, even 15 years or more later. This is now September 2020 when we're doing this video. So today I want to talk to you about some recent changes that we've been making over the past year or two in the office with photodynamic therapy, just to make sure you're aware of those. So with photodynamic therapy, it's a treatment that we use to treat these number of different items. With it, you come in, you will wash your face to, so your face is nice and clean. Then, usually I come in, I will wipe your face off with alcohol and acetone to make sure that there's no residual oils left on your skin. Once we do that, then we apply the photosynthesizer, which is aminolevulonic acid. And generally, there are two that we use. Leviolon is the tried, sort of the old-fashioned one, and we use blue light with it. And then sort of the newer variation is using amylose, which we use red light with. And I'll explain the difference here in a little bit. Um, so we put the solution on your face, then the solution is allowed to incubate for about an hour. This is something we've changed. We used to do 45 minutes, now we do a little bit longer. Um, the longer you leave it on, the more painful the treatment is. So we try to leave it on as long as we can without making it extra painful. Um, then, after the, while the solution incubates, what happens is the solution is preferentially absorbed by any of the abnormal cells. After the incubation period, again of about an hour, you will actually sit in front of a panel of lights that I'll show you here in a minute. There's then, a, then an interaction then between the light and the solution that's in the bad cells which causes death of the bad cells. This is a nice treatment that gives a great cosmetic um, outcome. The only negatives um, are two things. Number one, you have to strictly avoid light for about 24 hours. That means you need to stay indoors in a dimly lit room, particularly for the first 12 hours and up to 24 and some people 48 hours after they have the treatment because the solution is still in your pores. And so any light, even just a fluorescent light, can activate that solution. When patients ask me, how do I know if I'm getting too much light? Here's how I like to explain it. When I was a kid, unfortunately, I had one too many sunburns. Then if I had a sunburn, and then the next day I was outside, the any light at all, sunlight at all, hitting my skin, made my skin feel painful and extra warm. That's what it feels like with PDT. So if you feel like your skin is warm and painful, you're getting too much light, you should move to a darker place, okay? Um, the other thing you need to do to protect your skin during that time period is to apply sunscreen with zinc every two hours while you're awake, unless you are in a pitch dark room. I once had a patient who was a nurse. She had her treatment done, then laid in her bed in front of her TV, which was emitting blue light, for the rest of the evening. There was an interaction then between the blue light in her TV and the solution that was still in her skin. It wasn't the best result. For the short term, she had a ton of blisters, great result in the long run, but you want to avoid that. So every two hours, zinc oxide sunscreen while you're awake, okay? I usually tell people, say, if I was doing a treatment today, which is Monday, you would put that sunscreen on until Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, you put your sunscreen on like normal, go about your merry business. We like you to put sunscreen on every single day. That, so that's one thing, you need to avoid light. The second thing is it will look like you have a decent sunburn that peels for about a week. So there is a little bit of peeling, uh, but nothing too dramatic. There are some other videos on our uh, website that show you pictures of me when I've had it done at like day zero, one, three, and seven. So you can see what that timeline is like. 
So let's just talk about a few of the updates we've made recently. So number one um, is we're asking more of our patients to pre-treat their skin with a Retin-A-like product. This allows the solution, the aminolevulonic acid, again, either levulon or amylose, to penetrate the skin better and more evenly. The least expensive way to do this is to buy Differin Gel, which can be purchased over the counter. It's traditionally an acne medicine, but we use it for lots of things. And you apply that every day for about three weeks prior, prior to your treatment. Now, this isn't something that has to be done, but if you want to accelerate the results of your treatment, this is a way you can do it. The next thing that the researchers have found when they looked at ways of improving this treatment is, is that you can apply Saran wrap, yes I said saran wrap, this is actually cling wrap, uh, to the skin uh, while this solution is incubating. So in dermatology, there's a lot of times that we want something to penetrate deeper in the skin. And we want something to penetrate deeper in the skin, often we'll cover the area with some kind of plastic, whether it's a bandage or something else. When you apply a liquid or a cream, and then put plastic on that top, we call that, it's, uh, we say that it's under occlusion. So by putting the solution on, then putting the saran wrap on top, it actually helps the medicine penetrate deeper in the skin. And we just put the saran wrap on during the incubation time. So, so far we have a Retin-A like product, saran wrap, and the next is heat. The next alteration that we've made in this treatment is applying heat. Now we can apply the heat in two different ways. Sometimes we'll just use a face mask sort of as this one, which both applies both occlusion, like the saran wrap does, as well as heat at the same time. Or if it's on the top of somebody's head, sometimes we just give you a warm pack to put on the top of your head. The reason why we do this is researchers have shown that applying heat during the area while it's incubating greatly increases the killing capacity of the treatment of the abnormal cells. So those are the three main alterations that we have been making to try to improve um, your treatment. Well, actually there's one more. Traditionally, when we use Levulon, we use blue light to, for the treatment. So again, we put the solution on, we let it incubate for an hour, then you sit in front of lights. Traditionally, we use blue light. But there are a number of studies that show that red light actually penetrates deeper in the skin and can reach more of the abnormal cells than blue light. Um, so the newer solution that we are used um, is one called Amelou. So sometimes we'll still go back and use Levulon, depends on which one your insurance covers. We work with that. But Amelou's is shown to penetrate a little deeper in the skin and then we augment that with the red light or activate that with the red light. And again, the red light penetrates deeper in the skin. Okay, so those are the changes that we've been making um, in photodynamic therapy to help improve your result. Now, one last thing. Um, when patients talk to me about photodynamic therapy, a number of patients are very concerned about the light. What is the light like? Will I be contained in there? A lot of my patients are claustrophobic and they're very concerned about the light. So just one last thing I wanted to do is turn the light on, which is to my right, and show you what the light is like and show you um, how it would be positioned around you. So you can see that you can freely move about, you can push the light away from you, um, you can sort of slide down and get out, whatever you need to do, but you're not trapped underneath the light. You'll be underneath the light with, um, with uh, blue light it's 16 minutes with red light it's 20 minutes but you're in no way trapped there you can easily push it away okay so as you can see this is the red light treatment and if you're feeling like it's hot or you need to get away all you have to do is push it away so in no way are you trapped underneath the light so that's always a big concern to patients so i just wanted to demonstrate that it's very easy uh, the nurse station is very close by so all you need to do is step out and we can reset it we can give you a break and reset it for you if you'd like so hopefully that answers some of your questions about photodynamic therapy and illustrates some of the new improvements that we've been making in the treatment here in the office have a great day Call for an appointment today and learn more by going to our website at wvderm.com.